Hello and welcome back to Lawrence Plays With Cars. Unfortunately it's been a while since I've done a track day, so for this video I'm going to run through my most recent car mod, fitting a 5V regulator to my RX-8 and using it to power a dash cam and phone charger. The electrical part of this build is very simple, however running the cables is a bit trickier. I started off by running the power cable for the dash cam. My dash cam came with a cigar plug power supply, however part of the plastic casing had broken causing the 12V and 0V lines to short, so I removed it, but the cable was still fine. The A-pillar trim is held in place by a clip at the top which hooks into the trim, two clips in the trim that go into the actual metal and then a tab at the bottom which goes into the dashboard. Pulling the top of the trim outwards will pop out the top clip and the two clips that go into the metal. You can then slide the whole piece upwards to remove it. Yes, this shot is off the driver's side because I got a better view the second time I did it. To make access easier, I took the glove box off as well. To do that, open it as normal, then squeeze the sides inwards so that the lugs pop out, lower it a bit further and pull it off the hinge at the bottom. With the A-pillar trim removed, it was trivial to pass the bare end of the cable down through the gap and, and trap the top of it in the roof liner. I then replaced the trim using the same process in reverse. This was one of the most awkward parts of the job. The trick seemed to be to put the bottom lug in first, then make sure the top clip was pulled out and try to wiggle the trim into position on it. Once that was done, it was easy to push it down and into place. Now I needed access to the back of the cigar socket to get some power. This socket is on when the ignition is on, which is what I wanted to prevent the dash cam running the car battery down when the engine's off. To get in here, I first removed the gear knob by unscrewing it, and then popped the plastic surround off as well. This is just held in place by a few clips, but for the first time it's removed it may be a bit stiff. I just pulled and it came out quite happily. If you've got heated seats, there will be a couple of connectors on the underside to undo before it becomes free. I was quite impressed to see they were different colours for the different sides to help you reconnect them the right way round. Next, to remove the ashtray, undo the two screws on either side of it. It then just lifts out with a bit of a tug. Again, there are a number of connectors on the back for power, lights and so on. Mine also included a wiring loom for something else, but I think that must have just been an aftermarket mod from a previous owner that was never completed. It certainly wasn't connected to anything. I didn't bother undoing all the connectors. As long as the main power one for the cigar socket is undone, the ashtray can just be left hanging. In order to make sure I wired everything up correctly, I used a voltmeter to check which wires were 12 volts and which were 0 volts, both with the ignition off and with it on. It turned out in my car that black with a red stripe was 0 volts and yellow was 12 volts with ignition. The other connector on the side of the cigar socket gets 12 volts when the headlights are on. I believe this is for the interior light synth tucked away in there. Now that I know what to connect to, I pulled the dash cam cable across behind the glove box space into the centre console and trimmed it to length. I also stripped the wires inside it and tinned them with my soldering iron to ensure a good connection to the regulator board. I also used a piece of the cut-off cable to go from the back of the cigar socket to the regulator. In hindsight I should have used about twice as much cable here, the place I cut it made it a bit awkward later. Connecting the new wires to the ones in the car was quite awkward. I think either a different type of wire is used in cars, or perhaps 16 years of temperature cycling in a car makes the insulation harder to work with. Still, I cut open the protective tube around the wires and peeled it back allowing me to strip a small amount of the insulation on the wires themselves. I ended up resorting to using a knife to cut it back as it was too tough to push back with the snips. Once a few millimetres of conductor was exposed, I checked the polarity again just in case and then soldered the new wires to the ones in the car. I then wrapped the joints up in electrical tape and cable tied the whole thing together so the joints wouldn't take any force if, the thing, if anything got tugged. It would probably have been better to cut the wires completely and do a three-way splice and then cover it with heat shrink tubing, but in this sort of confined space that's really quite difficult. The final step was to actually plug everything together. I tinned the 12 volt wires and screwed them into the regulator, then did a quick check to make sure I had 5, volt, 5 volts on the other side of it. Once I was happy with that, I connected the dash cam wires to the 5 volt output and again cable tied the cables to the regulator to provide strain relief. I also wrapped it in gaffer tape to ensure that nothing could short against the car's bodywork. This is perhaps not the ideal way to insulate it, but it does work. I could now put the ashtray back in for a test fit to make sure the regulator wouldn't get in the way, and then plug the dash cam in for a test. I turned on the ignition and the dash cam booted up as expected. Success! To finish up, I cable tied the dash cam cable behind the glove box to keep it secure, and then reattached the glove box itself. 
This is another assembly is the opposite of disassembly. Put the hinges in place, then push the glove box back into the closed position so that the lugs pop back into place as well. Fitting the phone charger was a similar procedure on the other side of the car, but without any soldering required. I removed the A-pillar trim as before and poked the USB-A end of the cable down the gap. There's another piece of trim under the steering wheel which pulls off at the top, hinges down and then comes away easily. That gives easy access to the space around the steering column. I could then feed the cable across and into the back of the centre console. Moving the driver's seat back helped with this. I then took the ashtray back out again so that I could get at the regulator. Running the USB cable from the footwell into the ashtray proved rather difficult, so I ended up passing a piece of cable the other way, tying them together and then pulling it back through. This made it much easier. I could then just plug the USB plug into the socket on the regulator and refit the ashtray as before. If my regulator hadn't had a USB socket, I would have needed to cut the plug off the end of the cable and wire it in in the same way I did with the dash cam. Fortunately that wasn't needed, as I think it would have been rather awkward to work out which wire was which for a USB-C cable. Once that was done, I did a quick test to ensure my phone would charge, and then refitted the A-pillar trim. After that, it was just tidy a case of tidying up. The gear sticks around snapped back into place, and the knob screwed back on easily enough. Now when I turn the key, both the dash cam and my phone light up to show they've got power. Overall, this is a pretty straightforward mod to do. The hardest parts were tapping into the wires on the back of the cigar socket and reattaching the A-pillar trims. If you do decide to do a mod like this, or you have any questions about what I've done, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.